we came here, I wondered two things. First of all, is the Lightship L1RV actually real? Well, spoiler alert, turns out that yes, it is very real. And second of all, how niche are RVs? Because after all, from my Victorian Terrace Narrow Street perspective, something like that would be pretty inconvenient. Well, second spoiler alert, turns out, not that niche. One in 10 households here in the US have an RV. Around 500,000 are sold each year here in the US, of which 90% of those are towed. So we've come here to near Denver in Colorado to find out if the Lightship L1 RV is the RV that's been missing from the recreational vehicle lineup. Welcome to the Fully Charged Show. Love the Fully Charged Show? Then join us live in Canada this September, the South in October, and Australia and London in 2025. We've stepped inside the Lightship L1 vehicle and I have to say that this really falls into the sweet spot for the Everything Electric show and the Fully Charged show because we get to talk about electric vehicle technology and home energy technology all in one episode, what's not to love. But I want to point out a couple of things because this feels at the same time very futuristic but almost nostalgic and very charming as if this futuristic version of this vehicle has been imagined through a nostalgic lens. And maybe that's really unsurprising because the engineers and designers who work here all would have grown up on a diet of the Jetsons and you know things like that that they can finally bring to life as professional engineers and designers. One of the things that is also very curious is that I have a phenomenal amount of headroom. I'm pretty sure I have more headroom than I do in my own home. And in that sense, the perspective feels quite strange. You get the sense that you are in the big outdoors because you are already in this big and very, very open space. These windows are absolutely phenomenal. Imagine being sat here looking out at the mountains or looking out at the beach and just feeling like you're part of the outdoors. How extraordinary. Now this version, it can sleep four to six. There's a double bed there, there's another bed here. I think future versions will have a bunk bed there as well. And there's been consideration at every point about all the sorts of materials and how you interact and move with this space. The floor is made from a really durable material, made using renewable energy. There's ocean waste here in the worktops and a lot of the polyester, I think 70% of the polyester within this material is also recycled. It's also automotive grade, making it extremely, extremely hard wearing for when you're in and out of this vehicle all the time. So in here, you've got your bathroom, an amazing shower there. And if you had the canopy open, you could have a shower while looking out at the elements. Um, hopefully there aren't too many people to watch you doing that. Uh, of course you can shut that and, and avoid that issue. And a toilet there. So coming out of the bathroom area and we have the lovely kitchen. And what strikes me is that Typically when you're in a caravan or in an RV, you often feel quite cramped in the kitchen, like you have one space for a tiny chopping board to you know, prepare a whole meal. But here you have plenty of worktop space. You could be cooking a meal together and not feel like you're getting on top of each other. And there are of course other features that are electric features, which we love to see, that help make this feel a home from home. There's an induction hob there, a ginormous microwave oven here, a full dishwasher which actually I'm told for a family of four in this, uh, in this particular RV, that will use less water than it would to wash those things up. So even better bonus. Two enormous fridge drawers, a freezer, and lots of ways that space has been considered at every point to try and maximize the space that you're getting. All of these cupboards here are additional storage and even a lovely bin as well. Now, there are other ways to store things up here and you can get 8 to 12 of these luggage components to attach to these gear rails. And again, that's a really nice way to keep things out of the way and make sure that you're not feeling crammed in by having lots of cupboards at your eye line. Keeps it high up, doesn't intrude the windows. And I think it's also just a very sensible way that you can take those bags into your home, pack them, attach them to the rails, and there you go. On the roof, there is a three kilowatt solar array, and you'll also get more solar capacity if you deploy solar canopies when this is stationary. And that coupled with the fact that this is heated and cooled by a bi-directional heat pump, so super efficient cooling and heating. Plus you can store a load of energy using the 40 kilowatt hour battery or the 80 kilowatt hour battery, depending which spec that you go for. Put all of that together and this could go off grid and power you for seven days. So no fear of being in a charging desert. Um, and actually you could even charge your EV when you're ready to go home. 
But if you think about the fact that actually you've got a solar array, you've got almost six Tesla Powell's worth of energy storage, and when you're not out and about on some RV adventure, this is going to be parked outside of your home. I mean, this is a phenomenal way to provide backup power to your home for a vehicle to home sort of situation. Or you could even use this as your home office or a, or a granny annex for your in-laws, perhaps. Put all of that together and this is a truly remarkable amalgamation of technology that you can use not just when you're away, but in other situations too. And all of that has been made possible by this incredible bespoke EV architecture. And all of those different bits of technology have been fitted together in this beautiful sort of Tetris situation. All of that happening underneath our feet. So Toby and I were both at, at Tesla um, five or six years apiece. We were, we were different generations of, of Tesla's story and growth. I was there 2015 to 2020, worked as a battery engineer on the Model 3 um, and the battery, and, uh, and then later on the, the Cybertruck battery, or the, it, was, it was then the next generation uh, battery technology, the body supporting battery as we called it. Then COVID came and I uh, decided to, to leave Tesla, took a 6,000 mile RV road trip. I, I rented a big uh, 30 foot Winnebago motorhome and got really into the, into the past time and, and met a bunch of other RVers on, on the road. Came, came back, uh, which we incorporated from, from the road, came back to the Bay Area, started working on our, our first prototype. This is now the fall of 2020. And then he and I met a couple couple months later through our, our first first investor. I heard the the pitch like we're going to build the first American all electric RV manufacturer. I was like, you don't say like why would you do such a thing? And um, lo you know love the outdoors uh, kind of makes sense. I'd work on like small you know consumer EVs. I work on big commercial EVs. So why not a a big a big consumer EV? Yeah, the bottom line is if, if electrification is going to have the impact that it needs to, it needs to be a broad mainstream thing. Uh, in the U.S., that means meeting people where they're at and building you know, great electric products for all the different um, ways that people like to live. Now, when you look at this incredible machine, it's pretty easy to guess where many of the engineers and designers may have worked previously. Yep, there's a lot of Tesla and Rivian alumni that work here. Now, many people will be familiar with the really iconic Airstream, and actually that RV has featured in countless films, including the long, long trailer in the 50s, which was all about discovering the freedom of movement. And this, this really has echoes or whispers of that iconic Airstream design, only as if it was reimagined for the electric era and went full Balenciaga, perhaps. Now, this starts at 125,000 US dollars and goes up to 151,500 US dollars. However, if you apply a tax credit, that takes it down to 118,000 dollars up to 139,000 US dollars, respectively. So, this is 27 feet long, which is pretty typical of RVs in this particular segment. It's 8 foot 6 inches wide, making it about 2 feet wider than, say, an R1T. And it weighs when it's fully laden, so including all of the water on board, all of your food, all of your equipment, etc., etc., it weighs seven and a half thousand pounds, meaning that it could be towed by the R1S, the R1T, the Cybertruck, the Ford F-150 Lightning, and of course, the internal combustion engine equivalent of those types of vehicles. But if you're looking at this and thinking, what on earth is that going to do to my electric vehicle range if I'm towing this thing? Because after all, right now, it's about 10 foot tall. Then fear not, because currently, it's in camp mode, but you just wait until you see what happens when it's in road mode. Yeah, if you look at how the industry has evolved, um, it is, uh, I, I guess this is surprising to me, like it is not an automotive, uh, it's actually more like, um, almost like mobile home building. So uh, a lot of the leading manufacturers, what they're really good at is they're, they're good at like putting together what is a effectively kind of a mobile home, um, a lot of times built out of sheet metal and plywood and putting it on a trailer frame. And I, I think we're being honest, like we, we actually didn't understand this opportunity even from the beginning. Like we come from the automotive industry and what we thought was this was an opportunity to, to make, um, you know, pastime is, you know, massively popular, you know, into a sustainable and electric, uh, you know, pastime. And what we learned is that actually just, just taking an automotive approach to like durability, quality, quality testing, like that in, it, in itself actually is a, is a massive um, opportunity as well. 
Um, and uh, so yeah, that, 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 was, that was maybe kind of uh, learning along the way. And then on the design part of it, you, you know, like you look at it and it's, it's, it's stark, it's totally unique. Um, actually though, where we started, and this, this was, you know, when Ben and I first met too, something that was really inspiring to me is like, this is very much like a, a you know, a form follows function. Like we, we, we didn't build it this way because we wanted to make a really like, I mean, we did want to make a really, you know, stark, like cool thing. But like the, the reason we built it this way actually is because we're trying to solve a problem, which is make a vehicle that's vastly more efficient. And in order to do that, we have to make it super aerodynamic. And that's why we have sort of the different modes of the vehicle when you're driving, it, you know, it's, it's, we call it road mode. It's, it's about six and a half feet tall. Then it goes up to camp mode, uh, about 10 feet tall. The reason you do that is to really manage or, or mitigate the, or should I say minimize the frontal area of the vehicle. Um, and then once you sort of have that concept, then we, we put an industrial design to it uh, and made it look really cool. So we press the magic button on the iPad that controls everything that's going on in there, including cooling, heating, all of that jazz. And this has lowered into drive mode. And what it does is use telescopic walls so that the top sort of sandwiches the bottom, lowering this down and ensuring that this is a much more aerodynamic, friendly shape for when it's driving. Now, why is that important? Well, of course, if you've got this great big hunk of thing that you're trying to pull, that's going to impact your range. It's gonna mean more charging stops. It's gonna incur more cost. So efficiency is really, really important. And in fact, that was the starting point for the Lightship team. They wanted to start with the most aerodynamic shape possible and then build everything else around that. And that means that efficiency is really at the core of everything that they do. And here you can see there's a lovely swoopy shape, there's a boat tail end, which, you know, lovely sharp end as well, prevents vortices and inducing additional drag. The front also has a lovely swoopy shape, which means that airflow attaches really nicely from the vehicle that's towing it and stays attached to the RV. Now, those are all of the passive aerodynamic efficiency features, but there's something else that is really, really cool as well. On the 80 kilowatt hour long range version, you actually have an e-axle, which is providing kind of like, almost like a pedal assist sort of feature. And in the tow hook, there are a number of sensors which can detect how fast your electric vehicle is going and therefore how much power should come from the motor inside here. And what that does is stops the range of your electric vehicle being impacted at all, meaning that you can still drive for 300 miles with this and not have your range or not feel like you're dragging anything at all. That is truly incredible. Once we complete all of our sort of test program, then we will transition, actually we will make changes because certainly we'll, we will learn things, and then we will transition into uh, producing production vehicles, targeting uh, starting production of those vehicles um, end of this year. Deliveries will, 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 will be sort of early next year. And, and then we're just ramping up from there. Um, so this, this building, I think, uh, if you're to come back in a year, is gonna be, it's gonna be humming. Um, we have a big, a big backlog of customer orders that we wanna go out and build. Um, and really, I'd say this is, this is just the beginning. We, you know, we call this the, the L1. Um, it's kind of our, our flagship product, but it's, it's, just the, it's just the starting point. It's kind of like our, our Tesla Roadster, um, and, and we'll have sort of subsequent generations to, to um, you know, uh, you know, meet, I think, expanded needs of, of, of other folks who, who want uh, to experience an electric RV. The other thing we're, we're thinking a lot about is, is um, the supply chain and, 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 you know, pulling all the costs that we need to out of, out of the vehicle to make sure that we, can, uh, that we can sell it sustainably. I think we, you and I have talked a lot about how we, um, we think gone are the days of uh, selling a selling an EV that you that a, even a first product that uh, that uh, you can't make money on that is not our intent here. We are we're uh, you know th this idea of building to last extends to our, our business too. In fact, it's a it's it's one of the values uh, inherent in the business, and so we're going to make sure that we are building a sustainable first program here and one that uh, that allows us to get to the next and the next. We've come in here whilst it's in drive mode to give you the perspective of just how much the ceiling has come down. And also to show you that with these telescoping walls, it's not like an accordion. It is in fact one layer going past the other. 
and that means that you can leave everything sort of in place. It's very, very quick to select drive mode, lower the thing, and off you go. In fact, lowering the whole, whole thing takes about one minute. So goodbye to the days of taking two hours to set up a tent and two hours to take it down. Over the next year or so, the team here are going to be busy ramping up to full-scale production to ensure that they can fulfill all of those juicy pre-orders. Now, we know that scaling up is so inherently risky, but what's so interesting is that the EV market generally across the entire supply chain is that much more mature, making this much more viable and inherently less risky. And I really do wish them all the success. It has been amazing to see this. It is so refreshingly reimagined. And I hope it's not just a ticket to a low impact getaway, but the birth of a new RV shaped icon. Let us know what you think in the comments. Please do like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.